This morning we gather as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, to declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ, merciful Savior, as we contemplate your gracious and loving sacrifice this Lenten season, have mercy on us according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions, wash away all our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. And praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Praise the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Take a moment, share the peace with one another. A reading from Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, page 722 in the Pew Bible. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. Who is blind but my servant and deaf, like the messenger I send? Who is blind like the one in covenant with me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteousness to make his law great and glorious. A reading from Ephesians, the fifth chapter, page 1176 in the Pew Bible. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of God for the people of God. God. Today's gospel is from the ninth chapter of John, beginning at the first verse. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors, those who had formerly seen him begging, asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him, but he himself insisted, I am the man. How then, were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash, so I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Be in the book of Ephesians this morning. So you can grab a pew Bible in front of you or pull out your Bible that you brought with you or the Bible on your phone. You can follow along in the bulletin if you'd like. Let's pray. So Lord Christ, it is, it is a gift to be here. We thank you for it. We ask, Lord God, that you would help us to, to really receive the gift of the words that are before us today. So then we pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, Perhaps the greatest pursuit in life is that we would find meaning, that we would find purpose, that we would actually contribute to the community, the world around us. And Paul in Ephesians, as Charles read that for us this morning, reminds us that if we are in Christ Jesus, well, we certainly have meaning and purpose, don't we? If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the fifth chapter of Ephesians, starting at verse 8. Paul here makes a declaration, a declarative statement. And he says about those who are in Christ Jesus there at the church in Ephesus, he says, you were. He's emphasizing a past condition that was found in the church. But now things have changed because of Christ Jesus. And he says, you were, evidencing a past condition, and he says, you were darkness. Now, literally, darkness means the absence of light, the the physical withdrawing of light and darkness that has come in. But Paul doesn't mean literal darkness here. No, he's personifying darkness. And so darkness comes to mean or refer, at least here in, in most of the New Testament, Those who live in sin, both in sin's power and in the realm of sin. And so he says about those who are in Christ Jesus, you used to live in sin by the way of darkness, in its realm and captive to its power. But things have changed in you. No longer are you darkness. See, this darkness that Paul is talking about is the absence of light. For light and darkness don't go together very well, do they? In fact, they oppose one another. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says it this way as he writes to the church at Corinth. He says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And then listen to the dichotomy between these words, darkness and light, and other words that Paul uses here. He says, for what do righteousness on the one hand and wickedness on the other have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer and an unbeliever have in common? And so Paul is just communicating a truth of life that darkness and light, they can't exist together. And they don't exist together. They oppose one another. And he says about those who are in Christ Jesus, you were. But then he uses these two little words, these conjunction words. But now. Things have changed. Our ears now open up to the change that these in Christ Jesus have experienced. But now. He's contrasting what was to what is. He says you are. You were. The first verb was past tense, and now you are. It's current and continued action. You are and you will continue to be something different than you were before. You are no longer darkness, but you are light. Light is the opposite of darkness. By light, Paul means those of you who live in the light of the forgiveness of sins. If by darkness, Paul means that you are living in the realm and under the power of sin, then by light, those are those who are living in the light of Christ, in the redemption of their sins and the forgiveness thereof through Jesus Christ. God has illuminated their sins 
and forgiven them. And this comes through the Lord Jesus Christ so that we're not confused that it comes by our own works or our own righteousness or that somehow we create our own light. But no, this comes through the light that is Christ Jesus. In John chapter 8, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world, as we heard in our gospel reading. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And this is all purposeful. There's a reason for Paul's words to the church here at Ephesus. He started out with this little conjunction, for, it means because, but what he means here is because or for you were in the darkness and now you are in the light, there's a reality that they are to now live in their lives because of this change. And that reality is found in the next few verses. They are to live, find out, and have nothing to do with darkness, but they are to wake up to the light. Paul says as he continues there at the second half of verse 8, he begins this four-step process of how one might live in the light. You know, it's all well and good to understand that we've moved from darkness to light. But if we don't live that way, then one might ask the question, have we really transitioned into the fullness of Christ? And so he says, live as children of the light. This is an imperative command. It's not a suggestion. Paul doesn't say, well, now that you're in the light and not in the darkness, eh, you know, maybe you should consider living as children of the light. No, this is an imperative. It's a command. It's a direction. Do this. And what does that look like? Well, Paul mentions light's fruit. There are three. Goodness, which means in this context, generosity towards others. Kind of fits with uh, the great commandment, right? And the one like it. Righteousness, that is to practice right actions and works, not for the sake of salvation or forgiveness or redemption, but because of it. And then he mentions truth. This is correct living, not false living. What Paul is saying here is, because you are the light in Christ Jesus and move from darkness, because you no longer live in the realm or by the power of sin. Live a different way. I'm proud to announce this morning to you that our boys' high school basketball team, they were in a church league. They played over at CUP this uh, winter. Uh, they went 500. Woohoo! They won as many games as they lost. That's very exciting, right? You might be thinking, well, that's not so exciting. <laughs> you know, we're in March Madness. The Zags are in it. We're excited about that. But our boys' basketball team, they went 500. They didn't get a championship trophy. But they did get a trophy. And I'm holding it right here. You don't even know what it's for yet. <laughs> Let's hold the applause until I tell you what it's for. I'm super proud of them. And, and Brandon Wheeler and Drew Snyder, who are their coaches, says Richland Church League, Senior A, that's Senior High, and it says Sportsmanship. Wow, now you can clap. That's exciting. As a fellow worshiper at the church which they represented from night to night, two nights a week typically, I'm proud, more proud to hold that trophy than a championship trophy any day. Those are our kids, friends, of this church. And they represented Christ well, didn't they? This is what I'm talking about, and I think this is what Paul is talking about, when he says, live as children of the light. And this was no pushover league, by the way. 
they got down and grounded out. At times it got downright nasty, it seemed. But our kids rose to the occasion. So Paul says, because we are in the light, we ought to live as children of the light. Number two, in, in verse 10, he says, find out what pleases the Lord. By this, Paul means put it to the test. Examine and, cru- and scrutinize. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Therefore, says Paul, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and to approve, to examine, to scrutinize what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, pleasing God, I believe, is the highest form of worship and praise that we might put a smile on God's face, that we might hear from God, you please me, you've done well, is the highest form of worship and praise. And it's Paul's aim in life to please God. And so Paul says, you were in the darkness and now you live in the light. So live as children of the light. Find out what pleases the Lord. Number three, verses 11 through 13, have nothing to do with deeds of darkness. See, here's the deal. When we live in the light, it doesn't keep us from doing dark deeds. In fact, oftentimes we find ourselves doing those very things we don't want to do and leaving undone those things we desire to do, those works of the light. That's why, by the way, we have confession every Sunday as we begin our worship together at every service. It's the same. You know, we we profess with different words, but confession and and the reminder of forgiveness or redemption is the same, absolution of our sins. But we know that we have sinned and we fall short of God's glory. And our encouragement here is to continue to move away from those fruitless deeds. Most likely, Paul is talking to those who are already living in the light, not those who are living in the darkness. And what does Paul say? He says, not only are you to move away from those deeds of darkness and and live in the light, but you are also to expose those deeds of darkness. This is kind of a difficult teaching, that we are to expose the deeds of darkness. And there's a proper and right way to do that. We don't do that from the pulpit. (laughs) We don't do that publicly. In fact, Jesus talks about the methodology of exposing these deeds In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 18, you can note that. Paul says, expose them, the deeds themselves, not the people. Expose those deeds for the sake of convicting and rebuking that they might lead to repentance. Jesus was always doing this in his ministry. When he would encounter sinners, which was everybody, he would most often say to them, you're sinning. Stop your sinning. Go and sin no more. That's what Paul says to us, those of us who live in the light, that we are to expose the deeds. If somebody around us is sinning, it is for their benefit. It is the most loving thing we can do to say to them, please, help, let me help you move from darkness into light. These are the things that are done in secret. These are things that are done without exposure to the light. That's why it's of vital importance that we enter into accountable relationships with one another. There have been plenty of times (laughs) that Pastor Corey has been in my office over the last six and a half years and gently says, Steve, you could have handled that better. (laughs) Because guess what? I make mistakes. I mess up. There are times that I don't do things right. And I've invited Pastor Corey into my life, as well as several others, to say to me, you messed up. 
that was a dark deed, and you need to expose that to the light. At which point, I hopefully <laughs> repent and ask forgiveness. Accountable relationships help us to expose those deeds of darkness, and they happen all around us. Just yesterday, I was telling Pastor Corey, I was working in the uh, backyard. I had my truck parked on the rock parking lot there as it butts up against the gate. I was working on a few things, um, trying to find my lawn again. <laughs> it got buried under all the snow, which was first buried under all the leaves. Now it's buried, well, it's under what my dogs do. And so, in getting the, the house, the yard, kind of uh, going through the spring cleaning, I saw two people enter into our parking lot right by the rocks. And uh, one got there early, and then the second pulled in, and the first person got out of their car and went over to the other car. And I'm no genius, but I thought to myself, there's something nefarious going on here. And I don't know if you know me very well, but I like to get involved. <laughs> I do. Ask John Erlinson. About a year ago, I'll get back to my first story. About a year ago, there was a drug deal made in our parking lot, and I, I, and I saw it. And it was by one of our neighbors who lived down the street. And so, as the neighbor's walking away, I jump in my truck Unfortunately for John, he decides to pull into the parking lot at that moment, and I say, get in! <laughs> and God bless him, he got in! <laughs> and I said, do you have your phone? Yeah, I have my phone. I said, we're going to drive by slow, and you're going to take some pictures. We're going to catch these people. So John and I drive one way, you turn around, go the other way. That was fun, wasn't it? And he came back, yeah. <laughs> I just get involved. So I decided to walk up to these two that were in the car, and I said, hey, can I help you? Oh, we're not doing anything. That's not what I asked. Can, can I help you? I said, I'm, I have the pleasure and privilege of pastoring this church, and, and I just want to make sure that everybody that comes onto our property has a great experience. So what can I do to make your experience great? <laughs> And she says, we're not doing anything. You can search my purse. You can search my car. I said, that's not my job. <laughs> that's Pastor Corey's job. <laughs> and he's not here. So the, there'll be no search today. <laughs> and then the guy quipped back, well, it's a free country, isn't it? And we can be where we want to be. I said, yeah, it is a free country. But this is private property. <laughs> And I just want to make sure that there's, you know, no sketchy activity going on here. He says, well, that's not very Christian of you. Ah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. What I wanted to say is, oh, I didn't know you were an expert in Jesus. So tell me, what would Jesus do in this situation? <laughs> I didn't say that, but I thought to myself, in preparation of this sermon, Jesus would point out their sin out of love. He would expose them. It was a loving act that, I, that led me over to these folks. My heart broke for them. I know they were dealing drugs or something of the sort. By the way, that happens here. Pray for our church. Pray for our property. Pray for our people. Pray for the stupid pastor who gets involved with all of them. <laughs> but we, we as Christians, we want to help people if there's something dark happening around us, just by stepping into the situation, we bring light, the light of Christ. My hope and prayer is somehow, some way, these folks were influenced by the light of Christ in the midst of their darkness. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but it's my prayer. And so in summary then, Paul says, Probably a quote of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. He says, wake up. Isaiah 61 says, 
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Friends, we have a great opportunity to be light bearers. That is what we are. We used to be darkness, but now because of the gift of Jesus Christ, we are light in a dark world. Consider living as children of the light, finding out what pleases the Lord and doing it, putting aside your deeds of darkness and waking up that we might be light bearers to the world around us for the sake of of Christ Jesus. Amen. And now let us profess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So together out of obedience to your command, this then is how you should pray. With one heart and voice we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.